Hi, this is Alex from Groovy Entertainment. Today we got another record to play for you. Today record, Wilm Tell from 1978. So let's get started. I'll be there. Well, if you're too late, there will be no supper for you. 
I see you, Jamie. Walk faster. Don't be like your lazy father. Don't be like me. What's wrong with me? Nothing is wrong with you. <laughs> Who said that? Me. I hear you, but I don't see you. Where are you? You're looking in the wrong place, William O'Hill. I hear the voice of a man, but a tiny voice. Where are you hiding? Behind that tree? No, right behind the tree. But you're getting warmer. I, I give up. I have no time to play games now. I, I have to get home for dinner. I know. I was eavesdropping. I heard all that your wife said. Make your presence known. I like to see the folk that I speak to. There, in the tree branches. Look up, William of Hell. Don't believe my eyes. It's an elf. Oh, I'm a leprechaun. Oh. I traveled here on a gust of wind from my home in Ireland. Lucky for you, I stopped in this tree to rest. Lucky for me? How can it be? Tell her of stories that could never happen. Moving mountains, becoming a knight. Telling stories like that. Oh, my, 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 my. Shame on you. Well, I cannot see how it would hurt my son. I always think stories are more fun than the real happenings. Now, if you had a leprechaun for a friend, all the stories that you tell could happen. How could it be so? Don't you know that a leprechaun can grant three wishes to his friends? Three wishes, no more, no less. I like you. Do you want to be my friend? Is this all happening? It is so. You're awake and you're not dreaming. Three wishes shall be yours, uh, since we are friends. Well, my friend, people have always laughed at my stories. If you would let some of them I tell come true, they will not laugh at me. That would be a wonderful gift. They always call me the tell-it-all anyway. <laughs> the next time a problem happens in your village, you, William, tell it all, will be the hero. Are you certain, little friend? As sure as I am a leprechaun, to you is your three wishes. Just call me any time you want to chat. Now hurry, your wife will start calling you at any moment. How do you know? Well, I am a leprechaun, remember? Oh, William, your dinner is getting cold. Hurry, you lazy oaf. Oh, I'd better be going. Remember, only you can see or hear me since we are such good friends. See you later, little man. So, I will be a hero. The next time someone needs help, I will be a hero. Oh, we'll have to see. So William of Tell ran all the way back to his little cottage and ate all his supper. You have a strange glimmer in your eye. Why? Uh, nothing, Gertrude. Uh, nothing at all. Father, will you finish your story? Your father has not time to waste on stories. It is time for you to go to sleep, Jamie. You have to be up early and get some work done around here. Oh, all right. Good night, Mother. Good night, Father. We'll talk in the morning, son. You have no time to talk. You have to cut the logs for the stove. Then, Jamie, get off to bed. Yes. And then you have to... On and on, Gertrude talked, giving poor William a list of things she wanted done tomorrow. Soon she talked herself to sleep. It was very quiet as William walked to the front door, opened it, and looked out into the night. It was beautiful. The stars filled the sky and the moon was full. Oh, it was so quiet, so peaceful. Then he saw a rider coming from the village. He was riding very fast. But then the rider saw William. He stopped his horse and spoke. William of Tell. Good evening, sir. We have, I uh, oh, oh, why should I waste my time telling you what has happened? I know you will not help. You will only run. Oh, please tell me. I'll try to help you. Well, the giant of Dead Tree Mountain has come down off the mountain and is headed towards the palace. He is saying that he is going to steal away the beautiful Princess Rosella and make her a servant in his land. Oh, that would be terrible. I am riding all over the land trying to find brave men to stop him. I will help you. You have never helped anyone before. But I will now. I'll get my bow and arrow and get my horse and ride to the palace. Well, I'll try to find some more men. I hope that we are not going to be too late. And the rider rode off into the night. William tiptoed back into the cottage and got his bow and arrow. He then went to the stable, saddled up his horse, and 
then he began to ride back to the palace of the king. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to try and do it. My, how brave you are. He heard the voice of his little friend. Are you here too? Would I miss this for all the world? You'll be in so very brave. Well, I am trying. That is all anyone can do. Look, there is the palace. Where are you hiding, little friend? I'm sitting on the brim of your hat. I'm getting a wonderful view up here. Oh, look at the palace. It's in ruins. Oh, I think we are too late. What should I do? Well, how should I know? I'm only a leprechaun. But you'll say something. I'm certain of that. Your Majesty, the Princess, are we in time? No. Well, the giant destroyed the palace and stole her away. We have to find her. Well, where did he take her? Do you know? Back to the top of that mountain. Look, it's William of Tallow. Don't tell us that you're going to try and save the princess. Well, why not? You always run the other way. <laughs> I am brave, and I want to prove it to you all. I shall now go and save the princess. If I didn't see it with my own eyes, I would never have believed it. I hope he finds her. William Tell-All trying to rescue the princess. <laughs> Somebody will have to rescue him. Oh, I pray he finds William her. William was on his way as fast as his old horse could run. Soon he and his horse climbing up the evil mountain. It was very dangerous. The path was filled with weeds and boulders. The trees looked like horrible creatures, all trying to grab him. Oh, I hope that I know what I'm getting myself into. Oh, you're doing very well. You don't see any of the king's knights coming up here to save the princess. I hope that no one has to come up here and save me. Giant. Horrible looking place, isn't it? Well, it looked like a palace that a giant would live in. Big and horrible. I think I'll leave my horse here and walk very quietly up the rest of the way. Very slowly, William crept up to the palace. Carved there, his bow and arrow was slung over his shoulder. He tipped toad over the drawbridge. That doorknob is so high up. I think I'll have to climb the door and go through the keyhole. Up went William. Soon he reached the keyhole. He crawled into it. Oh, look, there on the table. A cage, and the princess is in it. What are you going to do? Do you want to use a wish now? No, I think I can do it on my own. Down William climbed into the castle. He ran over to the table where the princess was caged. He climbed up the table leg, and soon he reached the top. He ran over to the princess. Running towards the door, the giant woke up. What's happening here? 
The princess is gone. <laughs> I see you. The giant got up and started to run after the princess yeah. William. But because his shoelaces were tied together, he fell. Ow! We haven't time to climb up to the keyhole, princess. Can you squeeze under the door? I'll try. And they did, just as the giant took off his shoes and began running after them. William reached his horse, and they began to ride down the mountain. The giant was not far behind them. The giant picked up boulders and started throwing them at William and the princess. That one nearly got us. Look, he's throwing another one. We've got to stop him. He's so angry he could destroy the entire mountain. What are we going to do? I'll stop the horse. <laughs> you wait here. William took out his bow and arrow. He drew the bowstring and shot the arrow at the giant. The arrow went straight at first, but then it started to drop and it hit the giant right in his shoeless toe. The giant let out a mighty... <laughs> he lost his footing and began to fall down over the cliff of the mountain. Down and down he went. He landed at the bottom with a mighty thump. The giant was no as quickly as he could, he ran back to the princess, jumped on his horse, and rode the princess back to the palace. Oh, the king honored him for his brave rescue. What a change took place. William was a hero. Everyone looked up to William as the bravest man in the land. My will, so brave. I've known him for years, and I never knew he was so brave. My dad... So brave. Oh, he is so wonderful. I knew it all the time. Didn't I tell you that he was a brave, wise man? No, you always said that he was lazy and he... No, never... I never said that. I always knew he was wonderful. Well, the king was so taken by William and how brave he was that he gave him a special medal. I am honored to give you this medal for being so brave. Thank you, Your Highness. All hail William the Brave! his fame for a while. Well, one day he was sitting on the bank of the stream fishing when he heard the voice of his little friend, the leprechaun. Well, how do you like the fame that you have won, my friend? That's all right, but uh, I like being just me. You still have two wishes. What can I do for you? I really don't know what I want, my friend. I'm happy being just me. Well, well, all this time in the palace of the king, two knights were very jealous of William's fame. We must rid ourselves of this man who is the favorite of the king. He says he is such a great archer. I don't think he could hit a palace wall with his arrow. That giant business was just luck. I know what we can do. Let us have a tournament to find the finest archer in the kingdom. Surely he will enter, and when he does, he will fail, and the king will see him for what he is, a braggart and a liar. So the day came of the great archery contest. The knights went to William's cottage. Are you going to enter the great archery tournament? Oh, I don't know. I'm such a good archer that I think it would not be fair for me to enter. If you are the best, you should have the honor. Do you really think so, my friend? Oh, yes, we do. Don't you agree? Uh, yes, yes, then I will yes. enter. Well, the knights were very pleased. They ran back to the king and told him. Oh, your majesty, he says that he will win and that he can hit any target, that he is the best archer in the land. Well, we will see if he is. He will have a chance to prove how good he is. And the day finally arrived. The field where the contest was to be held was filled with hundreds of people from the village. William sat in the shade of a tree, and he was very, very nervous. Little friend, are you there? Right here. Are you excited about today? Do you think I will win? Oh, well, do you want to be the best in the land? I do. I really do. Wish it so, and it shall be. I wish to be the best archer in the land. So it shall be. Good luck. I now call William of Pearl. Your Majesty. You are said to be a great archer. Is this true? Your Majesty, I am a very good archer. Oh, my king, we shall now see if this kettle is just a braggart. Oh, the 
kingdom waits. It is your turn, William. May I speak, Your Highness, please? What is it, Sir Knight? Well, the way William speaks, I believe that simply hitting the target would be too easy a task for so great an archer. What do you propose, Sir Knight? Think of a more difficult target. My king, choose any target, and I will be able to hit it with my arrow. Oh, do you really think so? Oh, well, let me think, let me think. Uh, um, what would be a difficult target? Uh, how about hitting the, uh, the third leaf on that tree branch? Oh, what do you think of that, William Uptown? I could hit it. Really? Oh, well, oh. if you can say you can hit it without so much as blinking your eye, we shall have to choose a target that is harder. Yes. My daughter, the royal princess Rosella, what do you think would be a difficult target? It would be very hard to hit the flag that flies from the top of the tower. I could do it blindfolded. Blindfolded? Oh, you cannot. I can do it. Oh, this is no match. We will have to think of a harder target. Uh, people of my land, yes. what would be a hard target for William of Tell to hit with his arrow? Well, the people all call out different ideas. Some said to strike the clouds and make them fall from the sky. Others said to shoot the wings of the little butterfly. The king rejected all their ideas. I think your majesty will have to choose what William's target should be. So well, why do I have to think of everything? I know. It suddenly came to me. You can shoot this apple that I hold in my hand. Oh, no, that is easy, sire. Well, now just hold it a little away from yourself, my king. Oh, not from me. You can shoot it uh, from off the, uh, from off the, uh, from off the what? what? Well, your majesty, I think, uh, from off of someone's head. Oh, that's it, that's it, yes, yes. Oh, shoot the apple from off the head of someone. Yes. But who? Oh, well, why not off of the head of his son? Yes, yes, that's it, that's it. Shoot the apple off the head of your son. Oh, you are joking, my king. You said that I could choose the target. Let me see if you have such perfect aim. I'll try. Fred, you'd better not fail. So little Jamie was brought into the target area. I hope your father is as good an archer as he says he is. He is. Right, father? I am. Oh. Let there be silence. Silence, everyone. No, no, no. We will see if William is the best archer in the land. The entire area became very quiet. William, prepare to shoot. Just as he was about to shoot, he stopped and said, Your Majesty, do you have a smaller apple? Oh, no, I think I... that one is just a little bit too big. Too big? Oh, too big? Too big. Oh. Uh, do you have a smaller one? I hope you know what you're doing, Father. I do. But William, uh, this is the smallest apple in this basket. Won't it do? I guess it will have to. Uh, silence, silence. He is about to shoot. Everyone was very nervous. William pulled back the bow and in a little voice said... I hope my little friend is watching over me. Jamie was a little nervous, too. I hope Dad is as good an archer as he brags he is. William let go of the bowstring, and the arrow flew across the space between father and son. The arrow went right through the center of the small apple. The people at first were shocked. Then they all broke out into cheers. The king was speechless, and the two knights were struck down. The king then said, Hail to William Tell, the best archer in the land. Oh, and a day of celebration and happiness. William was once again a hero. Well, how does it feel to be a hero once again, my boy? Well, it's fun, but I like my simple way of life best. Oh, simple no more. Oh, no, no, no. You're famous now. You will have to do that apple thing again and again. Whatever you say, Your Majesty. As soon as William was able to, he sneaked away to his favorite fishing stream. And then he heard a little voice. shot you made, great archer. I did it thanks to you. You have one last wish. Then I can go back to me home. What is your last wish? Do you know what I would like more than anything else, little friend? What would you like? That no one will ever ask me to shoot an arrow again or try to be brave. Mm -hmm. That they would be satisfied with what I have done. And that I can go back to the way I used to live. 
Is that your wish, master? It is, my friend. A very wise one, I think. It is done. Oh, I'm so glad. Well, I have to go. It's been fun making a hero out of you. Well, it was fun being one. But I'm glad to be just old me again. I'll see you again, maybe. Goodbye, my friend. The hell blew away in a gust of wind. William was never asked to show how brave he was or what a great archer he was ever again. But to this day, hundreds of years later, people still remember the great day when William Tell shot the apple off his son's head. So, so that was Wilm Tell from 1978. So if you like, subscribe, share, and comment, and have a groovy day. In our next record, will be Don, Ka uh, Don Coyote.